This is the second time the Celtics and the Heat will square off in a Game 7. The Heat won 101-88 in Miami back in 2012, and their head coach Eric Spolstra knows how to win in this situation. 4-0 all-time in conference finals and elimination games and 5-0 in career series record in the Eastern Conference Finals. This will be the third Game 7 this NBA postseason. Two Game 7s in the conference semis were decided by an average of 30.5 points per game. Here to help us find some winning wagers on this game, we now welcome in the Wizard of Odds, Kenny White, and our NBA insider, Bill Ryder. Kenny, after the Heat's big win on Friday night, you said take them at the plus eight and a half, by the way. I just want to make that mention off the top. I figured we'd be looking at close to a pick em or a slight Heat favorite here. Instead, it is Boston that are the favorites uh, with that total just around 200. What's your play on those numbers? Yeah, Jeremy, it was a, a nice win by Miami, and that, that number was just completely ridiculous. But, you know, coming off of a, a Game 5 loss, everyone talking about uh, the winner of Game 5 wins 82% of the time, wins the series. And looking at Jimmy Butler, he just didn't look like he could get on the court, but he did a, a Willis Reed impression and came out and played one of his best games <laughs> of the year. And I, I, I think that Miami, they're just so well coached, and they are very deep basketball team. Um they're fundamentally sound. This is going to be a, a really uh, tough game. Nerve, nerves will be at an all-time high. Game seven, both teams trying to get to the championship. Uh, Low-scoring game, points at a premium. I think I don't know if Butler can come up with the same type of game. I don't think so, but he'll come up with a good game, and I think Miami hangs in there, and I think this is a close game down to the wire. I think this is a coin flip game. I'm going to take Miami plus the points. Yeah, guys, what a bizarre series and what a difficult series to try and peg. There's no such thing, not really in a gambling sense, in a reality sense, I think, in Game 7s at this stage of the NBA playoffs because it's about nerves, it's about execution under pressure. With all respect to the fine folks of Miami used to cover that team, it's not like it has the world's most raucous atmosphere, even in conference finals. So I think that's probably why the line is where it is. Now, I've got a ticket on the Heat to win the whole thing, so it impacts my thinking. I'm actually on the Celtics on the money line just to hedge here. But I like Boston to win the game. Two and a half is a fairly big number, and Kenny just said it. We saw Jimmy Butler, I think, go to a place physically he shouldn't have been able to do. He's not right. I have heard that he's not right. I think things will revert to the mean as it relates to where he's actually at physically. I like Boston to win this game. I'd love to be a close game. We haven't seen those. It's been a very strange series. Give me the Celtics winning handily game seven in Miami to go to the NBA Finals. Yeah, and you see the total dropping to 195 uh, and a hook between the two. Eric Spolster was asked about Butler's health after that game, and he said, look, Jimmy's going to go to a place that he needs to go to in order for us uh, to compete. Certainly he did in game six, will in game seven. Let's talk about some player props. Jason Tatum, 30 points to lead the Celtics on Friday. His prop on Sunday is over under 28 and a half. It's minus 120 to go over, minus 110 to go under. So where do you put your money when it comes to that prop, Bill? You know, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go over here. And, and again, I, I think in theory, in a vacuum, there, there's some value. We've just seen Jason Tatum have some big games, but I'll just keep repeating myself. This is to me the most murky and nebulous series that we've talked about of any of the NBA series in this postseason. It's just been really hard to get our arms around exactly what's gonna happen game to game. We've seen dominating adjustments, normally from the losing coach, in each of these games in this series. And we've seen some of the players, Tatum and Butler, you know, sort of along with this, having highs, high highs and, and, and low lows. I think Tatum's going to have a really big game. I don't think that his supporting cast, or at least all of them, are likely to play quite as well as you'd expect otherwise with the nerves and the fact that they are on the road. So give me Jason Tatum on the over. I've got money on it. I, I guess I feel good about it. But again, this is such a strange series. I feel like I'm in some kind of horror movie meets the NBA. Stranger Things <laughs> equals sports gambling because it has been a weird one. Yeah, I, this this is a, a such a battle. This total opened 198 and is down to 195 and a half. And I can remember back game one. I think the total was 207. And I'm I'm hammering the unders, and I'm I'm a loser to this series betting each game under. But the total keeps going down lower and lower in each game, and everybody's seeing what I'm seeing: less possessions. And that's when you get less possessions, it's harder to get the scoring unless you make shots. And they've made shots in this series. Both teams shot over 52% uh, effective field goal percentage in the last game. And that looked like a dead under after the first quarter. Still looked like a dead under at halftime, but second half they went off. Game seven, I, you know, I, I expect the same thing. I went under 198. I uh, didn't know if it would go down or not, but it has. And everyone's followed. Um, 
Again, looking at uh, Tatum, his median is 27 points per game. The average total is 205. And now we're looking at a total 10 points less. So something's got to give from his his points as well, maybe a point or so. So I'm going to go under here in this big game. And, and the number has been pushed up from 27 and a half to 28 and a half now. So kind of feel like we're getting an extra ha- getting an extra full point to go under. I love the fact, Kenny, that you openly admit that the unders have been crushing you in this series, but you're staying with the under anyways. Consistency is key uh, to cash in that bag. All right, Kenny, big games like a game seven require big men to step up. So, I mean, is Tatum your best player prop on this Celtics team, or are you looking elsewhere for value? No, I'm looking elsewhere for value because it's really tough going under with a guy like Jason Tatum. He's such a great player, but... His, his Robin is Jalen Brown, and I, I think Jalen Brown's number at 24 and a half was set too high. Again, Jalen Brown's uh, median 23 points per game with an average total of 205, and we're looking at a total 10 points less. So the points got to give up somewhere, and I think Jalen Brown is a, a guy in this series. He's going to struggle here in, uh, in game seven, uh, so I'm going to go under 24 and a half points with him. This is one of those bets, guys, where where the tail starts to wag the dog. But I'm already in on the Celtics winning, so I'm sort of looking around trying to talk myself into how that happens. I think, and again, I don't think think being on the road is a a, a huge and significant factor, but you do need veterans. You need guys who step up. You need guys who have been there. Al Horford did not have a great scoring outing in the last game, but he's been an impact player for huge stretches of this series and this run for the Celtics. I'm going to go over his points, rebound, and assists total. It's 21 and a half. He almost got there in the last game, scoring only six points. He's going to impact the game. I think he will hit some big shots. I think he will be one of those guys who is able to handle the moment and the nerves and the reality of what this means, how close these guys are to an NBA Finals. I like having some money on Horford, and I like the diversity of the different ways he can impact the game with this bet. I like it. Three guys, three good prop picks so we can find some value in this game for the Celtics. Okay, we mentioned Jimmy Butler's performance on Friday night. Head coach Eric Spolster said afterwards that you were witness to Jimmy's will to win. He was not going to let the Heat lose that game. Now the question is, you guys have posed it, can he do it again? His player prop, similar to Tatum's, the 28 and a half. Are you a believer in Jimmy in Game 7, Bill? I'm not, which means whoever's watching should probably bet the over. I I think I've gotten every Jimmy Butler point total wrong just about in this series. It's basically been every other. I've just been on the wrong side of the pattern. But I am going to go under for a couple of reasons. One, I I know he put in a remarkable effort in that game six. And his, as as Bolster said, his will to win, it's incredible. But it's not unbeatable. And I think his own body is clearly wrong. I've heard that from some folks in the NBA. We've all seen it with our own eyes over the course of the series. He just hasn't looked right at times. And the fact is that the Boston Celtics have been better at any than anybody in this postseason at shutting down superstars offensively when they have to. They did it to Kevin Durant in basically every game in that opening round series. They made Giannis Antetokounmpo work a lot harder to get the points that he got. He was a lot less efficient in that series than the previous series in the regular season. I think the Celtics make life really hard for Jimmy Butler. They know that's how they have to stop the Heat's offense because he really is the Heat's offense. I don't think Butler's 100%. I don't think he's even close. I'm going to go under the point total, almost certainly be wrong. You probably should fade me, but that's where I'm at. Bill, we're not fading you. You're, you're due. You're due to win a Jimmy Butler prop. I'm going, I'm going with you. We're, we're together under the 27 and a half. I went under 22 and a half in game six, and I lost that bet by halftime. I think he had 21 points at halftime. Uh, three games, he scored 40 or more four times now in the playoffs. Previous three times, the next game he had 20, 23, and 29. So two of the three did go under this number. But again, the Celtics, you mentioned it, Bill. The Celtics' defense is outstanding. Uh, they, they know they lost game six at home because of Jimmy Butler. And they don't want to lose game seven because of him. So uh, they, they will pay extra special attention to him. It's going to be a tough game. But you're right, physically, not 100%. To bounce back and have two type of performances like that when you're healthy is almost impossible to do. When you're not healthy, I think, it's gonna, I think he's going to get I think he's going to get into the 20s. But I don't think he comes anywhere near 27 and a half points. And Kenny, you mentioned uh, Tatum's prop going from 27 and a half to 28 and a half. Jimmy's prop went the other way, 28 and a half down to 27 and a half. So what is your top heat player prop for this one then, Kenny? Um, I'm going to go under with Kyle Lowry. His, his props now after one good game in game six was pushed from seven and a half to 11 and a half. And go back and look at his game logs. 
He's only gone over that 11 and a half one time, and that was the last game in the playoffs. He's 8-1 and one under this number. Another guy that's not 100% with a hamstring injury, and uh, the Celtics guards are tough defensively, and Lowry, he's the facilitator. So he's, he's going to go under here in Game 7. I love that bet. Let's just fade a whole bunch of guys from the Miami Heat. Nerves in moments like this are, are huge. So for me, I look around who's a guy that the Heat need to get some points, who they've relied on, who has absolutely been unable in some moments to be the player he's supposed to be, the answer is Max Struess. This is a starter for the Miami Heat in the conference finals who went not one, but two games unable to make a basket. His point total is 10.5. I do not think he has a big night. I do think there's something wrong there. Not physically, just in terms of his ability to handle this moment and this opportunity. Give me Max Struess, handshaking, feeling all the nerves under 10.5 points. All right, let's finish this off with your same game parlay for Game 7. It's winner take all. So what do you have for us, Bill? All right, so I think the total is too low, and maybe I'm maybe it's recency bias because the games have been a little bit higher scoring than we thought. Give me over the point total, 195.5. I'm actually going to fade Marcus Smart on making two and a half three three-point shots. He just hasn't done that in this series. And what they need from Smart in particular is physicality and defense and ball movement. I don't think he has to take a lot of threes. I don't think he'll make the threes that he takes. And I'm already on Horford having a big game. I think he's going to score. So I'm going to go Horford over the 9.5 points, along with his teammate Marcus Smart, not making two, three three three-point shots or more. And I'll go over the total. I don't think it'll be an incredibly high-scoring game, but I do think 195.5 is way too low. Yeah, we're, we're getting into a, the, probably the lowest total of the entire NBA season at 195.5. But my numbers are saying 189 right now in this game. And two of the best defenses in the NBA – uh, the nerves, as you mentioned, Bill, everybody's kind of hands are shaking, shooting these shots. So I'm going to take the heat plus the two and a half. I think Eric Spolstra has just got uh, a rabbit up his sleeve or something or under his hat. And he's he's one of the best coaches in the NBA. And I think he wills his team to a win here. And I'm going to go under the total. I think they're correlated. And then Jalen Brown under 24 and a half points. The Wizard of Odds, Kenny White, NBA insider Bill Ryder, picking Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals between the Miami Heat and the Boston Celtics. May all your bets cash for both of you. Let's recap their picks for this one. Celtics in the Heat, overall game pick. Kenny likes the Heat, Bill likes the Celtics. In terms of Jason Tatum's prop of 28.5 points, Kenny likes going under. Bill's going to go over in terms of their Celtics prop, player prop. Uh, Jalen Brown under his point total. Al Horford over his for Bill. Jimmy Butler, they're both going under. And the top heat player prop for Game 7. Kyle Lowry under his point total for Kenny. Max Struess under his 10.5 points for Bill. In terms of the parlays, Kenny's going with the heat at the plus 2.5. Going with the under. And Jalen Brown under. That's going to pay out 112.50 for you. Bill Ryder under the total. Or sorry, over the total. Marcus Smart under his a three-point point total, and Al Horford over his nine-and-a-half point total. That'll pay you 110. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game, the highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics? Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.